The NACAC championships happened just last weekend down in the Bahamas. Now, this meet was very low key and maybe didn't have the top, top stars, but overall, there were some amazing performances that went down across the board at these NACAC championships in Bahamas. Let's talk about a few of these performances and why they were significant, as well as why we should all be tuning into these championships year after year, despite the lack of the top talent. So first off, women's 100 meters, Sharika Jackson, we're talking about top talent here from Jamaica, of course the world champion in the 200 meters, silver medalist in the 100 meters. In the 100 meter prelims here, she ran 10.98 seconds, came back in the final, ran 10.83 seconds, very comfortable win. Of course, not those 10 sevens she's been hitting off all season, but very strong performance for her. We're gonna see her uh, very soon in Lausanne in the 100 meters. But right behind her, Celera Barnes from the United States and Natasha Morrison from Jamaica coming in second and third. Then in the men's 100 meters, pretty low key again as well, but Akeem Blake getting the win here, 9.98 seconds. He didn't make the final at the world championships, but this is definitely a, a confidence booster for Akeem Blake, putting Jamaica on the map along with Oblique Seville and a couple others, so great performance. That men's 200 meters, now this is where we had a very high quality performance. Andrew Hudson for Jamaica, 19.87 seconds to win the 200 meters. This is the first sub 20 performance from a Jamaican athlete since 2018. Remember when Akeem Bloomfield ran that sub 20 performance? This is the first one since then. Andrew Hudson really putting Jamaica back on the map in the 200 meters. And we're gonna see a lot more from him. He's been kind of off the radar for a bit, just transferred to the uh, Jamaica from the United States. So def definitely keep a lookout for him. Right behind him, we saw uh, Kyrie King from the United States ran 20 flat in the final, strong personal best from him there. Women's 400 meters. Now, this was a great race. I'm gonna be making a video about Shawnee Miller-Weibo and about Shade Williams, but Miller-Weibo came out with the win here, 49.40 seconds. Shade Williams second in 49.86 seconds. Now, Miller-Weibo, you know, of course competing at home, I don't think this was like a major race for her, but Shade Williams really pushed Shawnee Miller-Weibo most of that race and all the way up till probably the last 50 meters. But then Shawnee Miller-Weibo took the lead. She looked to her left, got the lead, and she was comfortable, eased up at the end, just like waving to the fans. Shade Williams, definitely keep a lookout for her as the years go on. She just won a bronze medal at the World Championships, personal best of 49.75 seconds uh, to get that bronze medal. She's been cl clicking off 49 seconds all throughout the season. Definitely keep a lookout for her. Women's 100 meter hurdles. Megan Tapper from Jamaica, Alicia Johnson from the United States. First off in the prelims, we saw Tapper run 12.62 seconds to get the leading uh, time in the prelims. Alicia Johnson, not too far behind in 12.68 seconds. Guess what? In the finals, they would flip positions. Alicia Johnson getting the win, 12.62 seconds. Tapper, 12.68 seconds. Of course, Alicia Johnson, she unfortunately uh, crashed out of the hurdles at the World Championships. Megan Tapper didn't get on the podium. Tapper did get that bronze medal at the Olympics last year, but both these ladies, really great performances. Devin Charlton from the Bahamas getting that 12.71 seconds for the third place here. Now, men's 110 meter hurdles. I think this was a high quality performance. Freddie Crittenden from the United States, 13 flat in the men's 110 meter hurdles. This is a huge performance. We have been seeing people come right up on the 13 second barrier, even just this year, right? Grant Holloway just broke 13 seconds this year for the first time. Of course, Holloway's personal best, 12.81 seconds, second best all time, but this is a huge performance for Crittenden. He has been on the scene for a couple years, but definitely has been getting overshadowed, whether that's by Holloway, by um, Daniel Roberts, by um, Devin Allen, by all these guys. Crittenden getting to the 30, 13 second uh, flat performance there potentially getting over the barrier in a couple you know a couple races maybe into the next couple years definitely keep a lookout for him also highlight jamal Britt from the united states as well 13.08 seconds getting into that 13 0 range men's 400 meter hurdles this was another huge race Kyron mcmaster in the 400 meter hurdles 47.34 seconds this is a massive performance Kyron mcmaster fourth place at the tokyo olympics last year unfortunately he couldn't finish things off at the world championships this year didn't make it all the way through the rounds but this is really on the cusp of his personal best of that 47 almost 47 flat he is a huge, huge sleeper when we're talking about the 400 meter hurdles. Remember back in 2018, it was Samba, then it was McMaster and it was Warholm. Then of course we saw Warholm kind of take the reins. Rye Benjamin jumped into the fold in 2018 as well. Now um, we have Allison Dos Santos. 
please look out for Kyron McMaster from the British Virgin Islands. He is a looming and sleeping threat in these 400 meter hurdles. Guess what? Right behind him, Khalifa Rosser from the United States, 47.59 seconds for a personal best in this event. He has been clicking off on all cylinders throughout the year. Of course, he made it to the final there, ran his second fastest time in the World Championship final there. We're gonna see a lot more from Khalifa Rosser as his career progresses. So, why is it that the NACAC Championships weren't really promoted or weren't tuned in by the masses and spoken about by so many people? Well, first off, the NACAC Championships is coming right after a string of high quality global championships. World Championships, of course, in Eugene, taking all the spotlight out in July. Then we had the Commonwealth Games out in Birmingham in the UK, also taking a lot of different athletes um, and a lot of spotlight there. Then we just had the European Championships going down as well. That's a huge, huge meet, and we know the sport is you know, focused in Europe for the most part in terms of where the meets are and where a lot of things are going on. So that's gonna take a lot of spotlight away from the NACAC Championships, which generally aren't looked at as this huge, huge championships. Another reason, of course, those top, top stars, a lot of the gold medalists are not coming to compete at these NACAC championships. Granted, we did have Sean Miller-Webo, we did have Sharika Jackson, right? We had some top athletes, but the majority of them were really not here. We didn't have Shelly and Fraser Price, didn't have Noah Lyles, right? A couple of these top athletes weren't competing here, so that's definitely gonna take some of the spotlight away. In addition, I do think it's contingent on both NACAC and the fans to be able to promote this event. Now, it was very tough to be able to get the stream, right? A lot of people were looking for the stream. It finally came up and it was, you know, just a kind of random YouTube um, YouTube page. But regardless, once that stream is out there and free and available for everyone to watch, I think it's contingent on, you know, all of us to be able to promote and highlight and show people where we can watch it. Once you were able to watch that free YouTube stream, I thought it was great. They were highlighting all the events, the high jump, the long jump, the sprints, the distance, everything was being highlighted. So once that's there, I think that's a great opportunity for people to be able to highlight it. Again, I think this goes both ways, on the fans and on the commentators, on the media, and also on NACAC to promote these championships and highlight how people can watch it, how they can get results. So a couple factors leading into why the championships uh, for NACAC were not being able to be promoted and not really focused on, but I do think there's a huge opportunity and a big future for NACAC and for a couple athletes who will definitely fly under the radar, but might still be competing here and get some good opportunities. So let me know what you thought of the NACAC championships. Let me know what you thought of some of the top performances that went down here. And let me know what you think of the future of NACAC championships. Do you see a really strong future for it? What are some ways that we can promote the NACAC championships and some athletes who uh, compete here? Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll be back again next time. Thanks.